dance with me.
Good morning, afternoon, everybody. Dang it, I got that. It's the finally stream. afternoon. It. It's finally afternoon. We got it. Welcome everyone to our Gen Con special. Get your paint on here. Welcome back to everybody who has tuned into the show before, and welcome for the first time for anybody who's tuned in for the Gen Con stream. Uh, a little bit about what we do here before we get into some announcements. Get your paint on is a show. Uh, that myself and Tony here put on. I am good Jordan Lamb. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, I am Jordan Lamb. I am the studio painter for Privateer Press. And Get Your Paint On is a show where Tony and I uh, will go through kind of just painting models and chatting with the community to hang out and kind of go over, show some new stuff. Uh, it's just kind of a cool hangout show. Uh, we're going to have something a little bit more structured here this afternoon, but um, we'll get onto that after the announcements. We'll get into that right now. Announcements. So, Mini Crate. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Mini Crate. For those of you who do not know what it is, uh, Mini Crate is our monthly subscription program where you can pick up sweet sculpts, uh, one off sculpts for uh, various different IPs. Uh, our main Mini Crate line is uh, the Iron Kingdoms, which is for War Machine and Hordes game. Uh, and you get alternate sculpts of characters within that. Um, our Savage Mini Crate line, which is the one you see here, is uh, Heroes and Villains from the Robert E. Howard universe. Uh, this one is Conan the Savage. He's available through August 12th. Uh, you can subscribe to get him and other models as well. Uh, we got the Legend of the Five Rings L5R. A lot of you may be familiar with this uh, IP. Uh, we've got Yoritomo, who's available through August 4th, and the Sheikah Spear Dancer. Uh, who is our VIP exclusive bonus model. Uh, we have a VIP service where if you subscribe for six months, you get the VIP model in addition to the six monthly models that you receive during that six month time. I, I love his hand weapons. Yes, model's dope. Oops. Oops. Wrong Tony, thing. There we go. Rusty. Hey, hey, Rusty's hey. Been a while. I, got a, I got a lot of buttons and <laughs> switches and things over here. For our standard mini crate, we've got Gore 10. Haha. -ha. Uh, it's a <laughs> sweet. Mechanical resculpt of Gorton, or everybody's favorite dwarf, or not favorite, but who knows? We'll figure it out. Uh, and then we've got Double O Debray, who is our VIP bonus mini, who started in February, which means that both of these models are ending very soon. So this is the last month to get Double O Debray, and uh, subscribe by August 19th to get Gorton, Gorten, uh, before he goes away forever. Bye-bye. Bye, Into the Gordon. ether. Uh, so, yeah. So, after this, we'll have a new VIP bonus mini and a uh, new monthly uh, thing starting in September, I believe. And uh, those keep stay tuned for those. Uh, next, we've got our Gen Con exclusive. So, those of you who are familiar with Privateer Press and Gen Con uh, will know that we do a yearly Gen Con exclusive model, which is something that we traditionally sell at Gen Con uh, and online at the same time. Unfortunately, uh, as you all know, Gen Con is not going to be able to happen in the same way this year, so we will not be selling it at the show, because nobody's going to be there, uh, but we will be selling it online. Uh, this model is the Microbrew Marauder, which is an alternate sculpt of the Eternus Continuum Marauder, uh, and is available right now, right at this very moment, at store.privateerpress.com. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post this link right in the chat, right now. Links. Get the links for everybody. Boom. There it is. Excellent. All, All right, right. Let's, yeah, let's get back to it. All right, so now you can see my long-haired face again. Uh, it's Did, been a long time. It's been five months. You, you haven't had a haircut screen. in this whole That's accurate. In the whole time? Yeah, I it's also been have like not five had months. a haircut. It's been a long time. Yeah. Um, so my hair is getting very long and luxurious. I don't think that my hair has been this long since the uh, early 90s. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. The, it, the old skater days. It's good to see you all. For those of you who are here and are regular um, guests of the show, it's good to see you all. It's been a long time. Um, hope you are all doing fun. Oh, Handley, I know your hair is not long, for it does not <laughs> exist on your head. When do I ever not look like I got lost in the woods? I've always been lost in the woods. Uh, well... I could ta sit and talk to you guys for hours, but like I said, we've got a little bit more structured stream for you guys today, um, and I'll be answering questions throughout. There's going to be a little time at the end of the show, I think, to um, go over more questions while I work on some stuff, but the plan for today 
is I'm going to talk about painting red armor on some Eternus models. Uh, well, specifically this model. Um, so I picked up some models that I'm going to be doing for my own personal army and uh, got this guy started. Um, just doing a little bit of testing on some of the other models, and I was like, you know what? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have some fun painting some red with you guys on stream. So I'm going to kind of go over the, the kind of my general game plan uh, when it comes to painting red. Uh, for this model, the, what I've done so far uh, is I painted, uh, or I, I primed, rather, in uh, black. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, had a ba black base coat with primer. Uh, I managed to find some random kind of rusty orange-red primer, uh, which I did over it. Uh, I was hoping, because I was originally going to paint these guys yellow, uh, I was hoping that it would work as kind of like an orangey undertone, um, but it ended up being a little too red, so we're just going to go for red instead of yellow, which is a shame, but um, we can make it work. I mean, we could probably make this work for yellow, but eh, what the heck. We'll, we'll go red. Um, so, a couple of things. There's kind of a couple of stages for painting red, and those of you who have painted Kator before or have read our Mark II book on painting Kador models. Uh, the red typically has three stages. So you're going to shade it, uh, you're going to highlight it, you're going to over-highlight it, and then we're going to bring everything back down with a red glaze. So the, the game plan here is I'm going to pre-shade with a couple of colors, or not going to pre-shade, excuse me, I'm going to shade with a couple of colors, we're going to go in for some highlights, and then we're going to do some extra highlights to really make things pop. And the reason we do those extra highlights is because when you do the glaze, it's going to bring everything back down together uh, and kind of tone down those highlights quite a bit. So you'll see that once we get to it. I'll go back over it again. But uh, we're going to start with the red right now. Um, this is a good time while I get started with these first colors. Um, if anybody's got any questions. Yeah, hit them up. Jordan, what, uh, what colors are you going to be using, though? Can you show those off on yeah, the camera? So, so um, your, put them I'm in your palette? I'm going to start with some Kato Red Base, which, because I've already got a kind of a red base color on here, uh, I'm just going to go with you know, a decent red to start with. Uh, it's a nice benefit of having like a pre-shade on there or a pre-layer pre of color. Uh, you can kind of cut out some of the the highlighting process. Did you go over the colors that you used on the, the base coat oh, for them? Oh, yeah. So basically all I did for this metal, by the way, um, this is two, two things. I did a base coat of cold steel, and then I took muddy wash, and I washed the whole thing. That's Fair literally me. it. That looks great. Yeah, it looks awesome. Nice and, nice and simple. Uh, what I did is I did mix in a little bit of um, mixing medium into the uh, the muddy wash to kind of thin it a little bit uh, and give a little bit more opacity, so that it would contain it would give a little bit more of the shine. Uh, Jordan, how are you? And did you know you kind of look like a young Keanu Reeves? You know that was not my intention with the hair, but I can definitely see where you're, where I'm where I'm getting with I that. I told you it looked good. Uh, yeah, he did say that it looked good. I'm I'm gonna keep going too. It's uh, it's not um not something I'm getting rid of right away. Uh, and in answer to your first part of the question, I'm doing well. Uh, I'm doing very well. I'm excited to do some painting, and uh, do some more painting, and to talk to everybody. Uh, do we have the studio studio scream scheme blah, 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 for more grave picked yet? And if so, what is it? No, I do not. Unfortunately. Any news on the new P3 paints? Uh, we are working on it. New, new news to follow, hopefully, maybe, soon. You will hear news when I have news for you. All right, Jordan, I'm going to ask you to center up, though. And yeah, uh, if, if you are able, you can months, right? feel free to spam your center up icons at Jordan. So Tony, what have you painted any um, Warcaster models yet? Um, I have. I painted up uh, some Eternus Continuum models. 
uh, because I am a convert. Uh, I realized that the uh, the ISA, the Iron Star Alliance, uh, you know, a little heavy handed for my taste. So mm-hmm. we're going more of the um, scary, shadowy, cybernetic uh, street punks uh, faction. And also, um, if you look at this warjack in front of you from the Eternus Continuum, I, I think it's clear uh, who the best faction is because. Mixing in a little bit of scorn red because this uh, K red highlight or K red base, excuse me, is uh, a little too bright. So we're just going to go back with that. We're going to mix it in. So you put down your base coat, and now you're just putting in a, a layer of a brighter red over it. Are you covering everything, or are no. you letting that base coat show through a little? Bit? Right. So a, I'm using a little bit kind of thinner paint, so there's a little bit of opacity, so it'll show the undertone. Um, of the colors, and the goal is to leave some of the previous color exposed so that you can see that previous undercoat. Um, even if you don't want to show the undercoat, it's still nice having it because it will build, like when you paint a like color that's brighter over a color that's similar to it underneath, um, it's just gonna get better coverage and it will look better kind of just building the same color over it kind of in different values of brightness. And I'm going to go fairly quick here. There's no need to be super careful with it. We'll get into the more careful bits later. Sorry, I'm going to try and push this into the camera for you. We'll get this upside down. Uh, I'm not sure what color I want to do the glow yet. It's still yet to be decided. If you guys have any good suggestions for that, let me know. So as you can see here, I'm kind of just hitting the upper parts of this. And I'm not doing any true brush blending because the glaze is really going to help kind of blend all of the things together once I'm done. So I can kind of cheat and save some time with not doing that. I mean, it looks like the, the paint that you're putting on now has some body to it. Like, it doesn't seem like it's yeah. too, th- so that too thin. Of, that was part of the reason why I, I mixed in the Scorn Red is it's got a little bit more body to it. It's not quite as thin, um, so it would help cover a, a lot better. This is part of the reason why I decided to go against the yellow. I was hoping that the this undertone, um, like, primer that I had at home would be thick enough or would be bright enough that I could go with yellow over it. Uh, Basically paint orange on top of this kind of rusty color. Um, But unfortunately it just wasn't quite bright enough. It was a little too dark and a little too red uh, for things to show up very well. So we had to go a different route, unfortunately. Fortunately though, red looks sweet. And Aeternus in red is a cool color scheme. Now I'm going to kick you a, a really uh, obviously dumb question or setup question, but is there only one way to paint red, Jordan? No, there's all sorts of different ways you can paint red. There's infinite, infinite variations to red. Uh, I'm doing a more traditional kind of uh, scorn red, or not scorn, um, Kador red, uh, which is easy because I was just painting uh, a bunch of Kato Red earlier, um, which I can actually show you guys really quick. I got a couple of cool models to show you. Um, For people who have seen our more recent Kickstarter, the Riot Quest Kickstarter, there's a couple of models that I have today to show you guys from the Kickstarter. Riot Quest Quest Winter Wonderland. Yes, Riot Quest Winter Wonderland. So these are not... Uh, the base set models, but this is Bulkhead. It's one of the um, add-on models for the Kickstarter there. Wintertime Wasteland, Tony. So this it's is kind of... become a tongue twister. This is kind of where, where we're going with this guy. I may decide to change that, depending on how, how I'm feeling. Uh, I might mix a little bit of magenta into it and use that kind of to give a little bit more alien color. Uh, but this is like a great example of like what the red will look like once you've got all the glazes on there as well. Did I say Wonderland? So, I, yeah, yes. Oh, that, see, that's what happens. 
So the other one we're going to save for, for later, you guys. So stay tuned for other cool things. Going to pop open some Murderous Magenta really quick, because now that I said it, and Murderous Magenta is like my favorite color that we make, or one of them, um, we're going to see what this looks like. Yeah, I'm curious to know, too. That is not a color that I would have immediately gone for. Uh, I might use it as like a shade to kind of... Oh, wrong, wrong cam, Tony. There you go. I don't know it was you the wrong one. You can kind of see it in the shadows here. This is kind of cool. I like this. There's a lot of like trial and error that you can do with painting your various different models as well to see if there's anything you like. I'm going to keep going with this, and, and we're going to kind of go from there. This is more of a process video and less of an exact recipe uh, although we can kind of go over an exact recipe at the end once we're done, but I'm actually curious to hear from our chat uh, if um, you know what are what are recipes for red that you like to paint. Do you have go-to's? Wonder if there's a ways that you like to experiment. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Capitini says murderous magenta murdered my black T-shirt and a pair of black jeans last week. Sounds it's about like, right. Uh, yeah. That'll happen. Uh, I hate to say a lot of P3 paints have uh, murdered a lot of my clothing and uh, maybe some carpet as well. Oh, yeah, I like this murderous magenta idea a lot. So we're just going to get in here. Some of that. Kind of hit it. Put it in the shadows. Yeah, I like that color. That's really nice. Uh, and like I said, I wouldn't immediately have gone for, for magenta. I would have gone for something, you know, probably traditionally more dark. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to go with a little bit more shades after this. We'll probably do like a beaten purple, uh, like deep shade for the, the armor. Yeah, this looks sweet. This is a lot more alien and otherworldly. Hungerford says he likes to start with a dark auburn or brown as a base and then work up red from there. Yeah, so that's that's kind of what we're doing, right? Because that, that undercoat is very, like, kind of earthy, brownish red tone. Right. Now, you could you could also start out with a very dark undercoat and completely work higher or a very light undercoat and work darker. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, like there's, there's so many different ways you could do it. You could um, start with like a really, really bright red and kind of shade everything down in various different colors. Uh, you could use green to shade red, uh, which is a very, very good thing to do because they're complementary colors. Get some Cool color theory in there. <clears throat> Forum Goon also says, starts with brown over black and then uses Kato Red base for the highlights. Um, yeah, that sounds awesome. That sounds like it would be a very, very dark, subdued red, which could look really cool. So we're going to get in here and throw some of this purple in there. Murderous Magenta. I like that. I like where we're going with that. Striker says black primer with amethyst rose over the top gives a nice darker red. That is something I've never yeah, tried. I like amethyst rose. Yeah, that, that's it's also a beautiful a really color. color. Um, and is that so, Striker? Is that something that you you glaze over the the primer, kind of letting it come through on the bottom, or is that uh, is that with solid coats? And a 90J standard is Kador red with exile blue shade. Exile blue is good too. I like that. You got a that blue and blue and red thing going on. Yeah. And there's another kind of the coal black, which is kind of a you know a blue green. So that's like right in the middle of uh, yep. of using a blue. I or thought green about for doing the shade. coal black for mm -hmm. this. Um, I might I might mix some uh, beaten purple with some coal black for the the final shades. Probably 
a better place to go than just beaten purple. I think it'll have a little bit too much saturation. So it'll be a little too bright or uh, too intense color. I want it to be a little bit more desaturated. Let me get, there we go. Uh, Fangoud? Wad? Sorry, I apologize for, for butchering anybody's name in chat. Uh, but they've said, I've tried the P3 red recipe, I'm assuming red, several times, but usually destroys the highlights during the glazing step. So he wants to see how you do the last step yep. so, to keep those highlights. Yeah, if you remember when I was talking a little bit about kind of the general game plan earlier, um, you want to over highlight. You want to make your highlights really, really, really stark. Uh, because like you're talking about is if you don't make them too bright, when you glaze over it, you lose and wash out all the highlights that you've previously done. So to counteract that, you have to go really bright uh, with your highlights, and that will help kind of, oh, uh, that will help kind of get rid of that problem. Kind of lining the edges of these plates as well. Give some of that reflective look. I want this armor to shine a little bit. Might dirty it up a little bit later, but just kind of getting that, that core color on there for now. And a lot of like getting this red to look really good without spending a ton of time on it is just to worry about your contrast, right? So your your brights versus your your darks, and. Um, you want to focus on kind of showing the shapes by having kind of the edges of things be bright and then kind of the curved parts of it be a little bit darker. Hit the top of this with that. Now I'm going pretty quick. Get in here, get some more of this bright red in there. Hit some of the back of this. And the glaze is going to help kind of tie a lot of these colors together as well. So you get some more of this darker scorn red mixture here. In fact, I might go more pure scorn red to mix in. We'll put that right in here. I keep missing you going to the palette. It happens so quickly. Sorry, yeah. I've been... Uh, it's kind of, I've got the three kind of colors on there. If you want to go back to the palette, you can see it here. I've got the kind of the magenta here, and I've got a little bit of a mix down in here of this corner with some scorn red and the murderous magenta. We've got scorn red here, and kind of a little bit of a mix of the scorn red and the kato red here, uh, and then kato red base right here. So I can kind of hit the spots that I need to um, to get the various colors that we want. Can you center up a little bit, Jordan? Yep. There we go. And you'll see that I'm not really hitting this underside of this panel here because this overhang right here is covering this, so I'm not going to highlight underneath there. I'm just going to highlight kind of this, these exposed areas. They're going to catch the light. I just say I've been painting miniatures for a long time. I'm aware of the basic art principles of light, and even then, when I'm painting miniatures, I have a tendency to over... Uh, not over highlight, like make things too bright, but really to not let the shadows do their work in places. Um, I don't know if anybody else has a, if that's common for anybody else either, but man, when I'm, when I'm adding those highlights, I just want them to go everywhere. It's hard to leave the shadows alone, even when I know they should be left alone. Yeah, it can, it can be tough. It's, it's definitely something you have to like train yourself to, to not do um, and kind of like let the shadows speak for themselves and have their own kind of identity in a sort of way. You don't want to lose all those, those cool colors that you've put into the shadow, right? Like, it's an important part of the, the colors that you painted. This might be a little overexposed, Tony, this camera. Is it? Let me see yeah. if I can. It's pretty see bright. Can knock it down on this end a bit. Yeah, that's much How's better. That? A little better? Yeah, that's much better. Yeah. That more accurately represents what's going on. It was looking pretty like, pretty neon there. 
and it's not quite there yet. But I mean, even that, like, just a couple minutes of me doing that quick shade and, and highlight, you can already see, like, a lot of definition in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's starting to pull out. They're starting to look more three-dimensional. So we're just going to grab some more Kador Red base. And we're going to start really kind of pushing these highlights, right? So we're going to hit the upper raised edges where the light's going to hit. So we're going to go here. We're going to bring this down. So this no longer Top has the scorn this. red in it. This is Correct. pure. This is pure Kato red base. We're just hitting hitting the top here, and the uh, the areas that are to the top part of the model are going to get more red than the areas on the bottom. So, like this, this is more exposed. So this will probably get more Kato red base than most parts will, um, but get in here and kind of wipe some of that out. Um, but we're still not going to give it quite as much as we would on like this shoulder, for instance, or the top part here, which is going to get the most of it. We're going to get some in there. We're going to get some on the face. more and we're going to hit this part in here in the shoulder so this actually came this whole stream came in pretty good timing too because I think a lot of people are starting to get their hands on their Warcaster Kickstarters. Right? Yes, I've been seeing a lot of posts in the in the Facebook group for Warcaster. People are very excited to be finally getting uh, their model shipped. I know out in our warehouse, they are continuing to pack stacks and stacks of Warcaster boxes to ship those out and keep them coming. And um, yeah, it's very exciting to actually to see it out in the world. Show of hands in uh, in chat, who uh, who got a Turnus? Anybody out there pick up a uh, Eternus starter Every, set? Everybody should be raising their hand right now. If you said ISA, uh, we can still hang out. That's all right. ISA is pretty cool. I like ISA a lot. Vorio got, got theirs this week. Nice. Anybody start painting theirs yet? I will say I, I do like all the factions quite a bit. I think of, of all the paint schemes, I probably like painting the marchers the best, um, which what? is interesting because it was the first one that I did. Yeah, why is that? I, you know, I don't know. I like the colors a lot. Um, that kind of like really kind of sickly gr greenish yellow color for their armor that kind of goes into that um, more sandy color is, is really cool. I like painting it a lot. And that blue is a lot of fun to paint for the glow. Center up, Jordan. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, if you're new to this stream, that's part of what I do when I sit here. Is make I, sure I that pretend I'm to talk to Jordan, but it's mostly so I can yell at him for not being uh, on the screen. So I'm just kind of building up this, this brightness here. This, this is probably the most time-consuming part, is kind of building up this, this brightness of this particular layer. Uh, once you get some of that, you know, that value up and you get things kind of nice and bright, those further highlights become a lot easier because uh, you've got a bright surface to work with already. Do a little bit on here. You might be able to go to the highlight color here in a second. some of this, these butt plates, hit the top of that, hit the back of this knee joint here, hit the back of this guy, hit that little raised edge there. All right, so we can do a little bit more work here in the middle part. Jacob Z, I was totally thinking red as well for my Eternus Continuum army. 
Nice. I, I mean, Red just looks Here, let, let me do all the legwork so you can see if you like it. Yeah. Yeah, I like, I like this red a lot. That, that Murderous Magenta was a, a good, good choice. I think so, too. All right. Uh, well, you know, let's push a little bit more of the shadows here. Let's see what this looks like with a little bit more shadow. So tell me, tell me what you're going to do with uh, your shadow colors. What are you thinking? We've heard, we've heard greens, blues, blue-green, purple, and brown have been the ones that have come up in chat that, that people seem to uh, like to use as their go-tos. For their bases for red? Yeah. Nice. So this is a mixture of Beaten Purple and Murderous Magenta. Okay, you can center up on camera. Yeah. Sorry, I'm at a weird angle here underneath the model. Kind of seeing what's going on here. Yeah, I like this a lot. Cool color, and if you make this layer uh, a little bit thinner, uh, you can kind of almost glaze it over some of the other parts. Get some of that underneath the knee, over there. And then I'm going to clean up all of this uh, metal eventually. Uh, I got all the base coat on there, so it's mostly painted. And I can go back in and do the highlights and some shadows, maybe some washes to kind of change the color up a little bit. But we'll do that at another time. Because today is the paint, the paint red stream. <clears throat> all right. So I like where that's going. Hit the shadows under here because that hasn't really been touched yet. A little bit right there, a little bit right there, a little bit right there. Like I said, contrast is really good, right? So, and what I'm doing here is I got a little bit of extra paint on the top, so I'm just kind of touching it with my finger to kind of blend it back in. Go back here in the shadowed area. Now, is this your final shade, or are you planning to go this is darker probably, than this? You know, I'll, I'll play it by ear. And see, I think for right now, this is probably good enough um, for the stream. If I were doing like a studio model, I'd go a little bit deeper yeah, <clears throat> and darker. But it doesn't necessarily need it, right? Like, well, you can always play the contrast game, too, effort. since you know you're going to go brighter. By, by definition, when you start adding more lights, it's going to make right. that yep. purple appear darker. All right, so let's go with uh, some Kato Red Highlight, which we're going to mix into... Our Kato Red base. Uh, let me get some more Kato Red base wherever I went. There it is. And this is basically like a nice orange color. Get some more Kato Red highlight. Put it over here. All right, so let's completely get all the water out of the paintbrush because I don't want to water this down any more than it already is. I want to keep this rather thick. And we're going to go in and start putting some more focused highlights in. So we're going to leave some of that previous layer exposed, and we're going to hit it with this brighter color. Now, on the camera, this is definitely a more subtle change than, yes. than the other stuff that you've been adding. This is a lot more subtle. Uh, and these progressions of, of red and kind of orange and yellow as they go up um, will be a little bit harder to see on camera. Uh, you'll definitely notice them, but it will t be a little bit more difficult to see. Um, I can try and just skip this step, see if we can just push push the brightness up. So this is just pure Kato Red highlight with just a touch 
of the um, Kitterud base in it. Actually, Jordan, if you can shift your hands over to your, yeah, yeah just a touch. There you go. Yep. Now you'll center up. So, building up that orange. Oh, yeah. See, it's already starting to show up real well. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Let me see if I can... Uh, do we have a dry palette around here, Tony? A dry palette? Yeah, just like a well palette. Something that oh, doesn't yeah, have yeah, water yeah. already in it. Perfect. Thank you. So, for something like this, where I want to keep it really thick, the wet palette tends to... Do you just want to put that on, oh, right yeah, on the... Yeah, put it on the wet palette. Um... I'm just going to mix it in one of these wells so it doesn't get extra water that I don't want in it. <clears throat> All right, so we're basically going to go right out of the pot for this. Uh, I'm not even. I'm just going to get a nice smooth coat on my my brush, and we're just going to kind of poke it into the the highlight areas where we want it. And this is more of like a cheating time saver step. Uh, this is not something that you have to do, but this is something that you can do if you want to save some time. Uh, normally I would go very slowly and progress through each individual layer more, but uh, in an effort to save time, because um, there's definitely a few more steps that we want to do here, uh, I'm going to go with this technique. See, I can definitely relate to time saving techniques because I do love painting and I do love detailing and I do love doing all the blends and making it look all nice uh, and it always looks great in the end but sometimes it's uh, you know can be a little time consuming if you're if you're trying to get something done and on the table and ready to use so you guys can see I'm kind of following the the curve of the edge of this leg plate down just get the top of it just a little bit because this is not going to see a ton of light Try and center up just a little bit more, Jordan. Yep. So and this is largely creating that contrast that we were talking about. So this is pushing those highlights to kind of define the edges of the plates. And the nice thing too is you can you can course correct after this, you can bring in more Kata Red base, right? And you can kind of feather a little bit of this orange out to kind of tone it down a little bit if it's too much for your liking or if you don't want to do the red glaze um, afterwards. Hit the edge of this. So I'm using the edge of my paintbrush, right? I'm getting kind of a little bit more of the excess paint off and I'm just hitting with the tip of my brush, I'm going along the edge of this panel to kind of hit hit a nice like line down there. Do the same on the inside of this. To the edge of this. Do this bit. Yeah. This is showing up better on camera. This is something you definitely want to build up a couple of layers of because it looks a little muddy as is. And um, as you get brighter, it'll be a, a little less muddy. Orange over red is kind of the, will always have that first step where it kind of just looks a little muddy and, and kind of off and isn't quite nice and clean. But as you build up the, the opacity on the, on the model, it will, will definitely get there. That's good to know. That is definitely something that I struggle with. Yeah, orange is a tough color. It's, it's, it's that first color where you're like, man, I think I'm ready for the orange, and then you put the orange on, and you're like, this doesn't look right. I'm assuming the same thing happens with browns. I mean, because that's you know another problem I have you know, is doing any sort of reddish brown Browns with aren't orange. too bad. It's definitely not as bad. You, you, you get it with yellow a lot too, right? It's kind of in the same wheelhouse as far as colors are concerned. All right, let me get this. And center up a little bit. Yep, sorry. Oops. Top of the head. All righty.
Also, orange doesn't cover very well. It's just like one of those weird colors. Yeah. It's generally the reason why when I paint um, yellow, I tend to paint like oranges and browns and then highlight with yellow because yellow highlights really well over orange, but not so much over brown. Just hitting these raised, raised edges. Hit the top of the shoulder plate. Hit the top there. Let's get some lines in there. Yeah, there we go. This red's kind of starting to pop. Got a question from Hidicule. Speaking of yellow, how do you avoid leaving a ring where you applied the yellow for a two-brush blending over red? Uh, so if you're getting the ring, um, you're not working fast enough. So your paint's starting to dry before you start working with it. So uh, you can add a little bit of mixing medium to it, or um, you can just try and you know work under the two-brush blending to try and get a little faster. Um, there's all sorts of different things that you can do. Center up, Jordan? Yep, sorry. So I'm kind of feathering out some of this so that it kind of blends a little bit into the previous color. And then I think I'm just going to go to the next color up. Um, let's go with... Uh, so there's a couple of different ways that you can go when you're highlighting red. Um, you can go up to yellow, or you can kind of go into more peachy flesh tone colors. Uh, I prefer to go into the peachy tones um, than I do going into yellow. So mix. Why, why is that? Um, yellow can be a little harsh. And it tends to make it look a little bit more orange than it does, um, like, red. Because you keep that, like, pink tone in there. So um, Jordan? Yeah. So we got this highlight color right here. And this is where I'm going to get a lot of this, like, edge highlighting on the plates. In this last highlight color. 90J says you can also get rings from too much water on your brush, right? Yes. But the, the ring is basically when you're, the paint is drying before it's getting moved around. Like that's what the ring is. It's the edge of the droplet of paint on your model is drying uh, before the rest of the paint dries. And that is typically that it's either too thick or too thin, rather. Um, or you're just not working with it fast enough. And you can kind of resolve it in, in both ways, right? Like either you can move a little bit faster to, to get it to kind of move, blend before it dries, or you can uh, try and work with the consistency and the thickness of your, your paint to try and fix it that way. edge. And I'm not going to go all the way down on this one. I'm just going to take it a little bit of the way down. And I'm going to hit the edge of these plates. There is some conversation about magnetizing um, war jacks 
and I'm going to post a link in our chat to a video of uh, physical engineer Brian McLaughlin uh, showing how to magnetize Warjax for Warcaster because uh, for those of you who, who might not know, um, the Warjax in Warcaster have um, customizable weapon loadouts. Uh, from game to game, you can put them with any weapons you want. So um, these models were designed to be able to accept magnets for hobbying. Uh, so if that's something you're interested in, here is the link to watch a video to see how to magnetize your jacks. Yeah, once you start getting the edge highlight on these panels, I everything starts really popping, which is nice. So getting there. One little line at a time. Get this shoulder. And the other noteworthy thing is this is a, you know, 40, 40 mil uh, Warjack model. 50 mil? 50, oh, sorry, 50 mil. Um, and you're making real good progress in the, in the time we've been. We've only been, uh, been working on it for a little over a half an hour, maybe 40 minutes or so. Let me go back to that orange. Can we get this a little bit more highlighted? So this is definitely not something that, that takes a ton of time yeah, and, on a and, larger I mean, model. The more time you, you take on it, the, the better the blends will be and all of that, right? Like that's <clears throat> in, in an effort of conserving time, right? Like we're skipping through a lot of it, but you, you're getting the, the large gist of the, the goal, right? Is to seeing all the steps in, in motion Lord Dragon Master. Not a ton of time for a studio painter equals weeks for the rest of us. Yeah, I know it's not quite that simple. Practice and familiarity um, really help. Yes. But the Being but the, familiar with the the, yeah. the process is yeah. like the most important part, right? But the actual techniques are not necessarily time consuming and are adjustable for the time that you either have or want to spend. Correct. See, now that is looking awesome. I love when uh, that Doing nice edge, edge highlighting yeah. comes in there and brings out those details like that. Now, the other thing is like this is, uh, so especially for those, um, those ridges on that, on that top pod, uh, I would have wanted to, like my first reaction would be to go in and make them darker, to pull them out. And once you started highlighting them, that's still an option, mm -hmm. but it isn't something that... Um, needs to happen that the highlights right. already make it. I mean, it brings out the shape so you don't I need them to be dark here. this is a little off topic but I can go in here and kind of add this is just black I wouldn't normally use just black but um, to kind of go in there with a little bit of a wash And so again, I mean, I know you said wash, but so just to definitely a watered, oh, yeah. watered down. Oh yeah, this is version of the black. This is uh, like black that's been sitting on my palette since the beginning of the stream, so it's like absorbed a lot of water. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just. The more you push the the brights and the sh the like the highlights and the shadows, the more you're going to get this like really nice, clean color, right? This brush is pretty dead for doing this sort of thing, unfortunately. Let me get a little bit more of this. I think for my final edge highlights that I'm going to do. I'm just gonna go with pure rin flush, which is the the kind of the color that I mixed into the um, the orange earlier. 
it's this color right here. So this is a mix of these two colors, or what I was doing earlier, and then get rid of the orange, and it's just the rune flesh. And now is that, if you, if you weren't going to be doing a glaze, right. would you be going this high with the highlights? No. No. Definitely not. Center up? Yep. Sorry. This is the, the more finicky and tricky part, so it's hard for me to do it in stream camera version. We're getting to see the top of Jordan's luscious lockdown oh. hair. It's all right. How are we doing on time, Tony? Yeah, we're doing good. We got about ten minutes left. Okay. You know, if we if we're if we're being strict to the hour, but of course we can uh, we can take a little extra time if we want right. and finish up. Now, if anybody's got any other questions for Jordan, I know other questions have been coming in, but general painting questions, anything about painting red or yeah, that's part of the, part of the you thing want. that we yeah. do here on Get Your Paint On is it's it's largely just a way for people who have questions or want to hang out can watch me paint and or ask questions about things that they're curious about, even if they're unrelated, right? Like, I'll answer questions about blue or teal or what have you, anything you want. Um, it's just a, it's a way for, for us all to hang out and escape for a little bit and paint, right? Lord Dragon Master wants to know what size brushes you use typically. Uh, I or use, what size brush that is specifically. So this is a Winsor Newton Zero. Uh, so I typically use uh, Zero, One, and Two from Winsor Newton for my paint brushes. Um, but you can use pretty much whatever. Uh, there was a little bit of a conversation here about, uh, about you know, being able to paint fast and, and painting with speed. And there was uh, some talk about how an airbrush will speed things up. Yes. Um, and, and well, yeah, I, would, I did want to, yeah, I did want to comment on it and say that it's kind of, it's a kind of a trick question because, um, the airbrush will speed up your results, but it is not a replacement for not having speed skills for painting because the airbrush itself is a tool that has a little bit of a learning curve. So if you're, if you've not used an airbrush, you're interested in using an airbrush or thinking it will speed up your painting, it will, but you got to put in uh, quite a bit of time up front, becoming familiar with the tool and how best to use it. So in the long term, absolutely. But it is not a, uh, I would not say a buy airbrush, uh, sit down with it, and then immediately uh, have quick fix results for, for speed. It also has a very particular style mm -hmm. of look that it achieves when you paint with it. Uh, and if you're a fan of that, then perfect. That's exactly what you're looking for. But if you were not a fan of that, then it might not be the best route for you. It's just another tool. Yep. Put it in the toolbox, pull it out when you need it. Uh, Striker would like to know what's the best way to do a metallic blue. Now, Striker, are you talking about an actual metallic blue using um, metallics mixed in with blue, or are you talking about how to do a shiny reflective blue? Yes, that is a good uh, clarification, Tony. That it's an important thing to distinguish there. Just Hanley wants to know, Jordan, do you consider your new hairstyle flouncy? Flouncy? No, that's not what I would call it. It's it, it's a style, for sure. Not not sure. Aspirationally flouncy, perhaps. If you, sure. Not sure what flouncy means. <laughs> not sure I want to know. I know I know what Jeff means. Then Tony, as somebody who's in the room and can see it firsthand, would you consider it flouncy? No, it's it's uh, it's on its way. If it wants to be flouncy, uh, it has it has the raw material, the moxie, if you will, to become flouncy. All right. <clears throat> 
So we're just about done with this bit, and then we can get to the the glaze stage. So Stryker did say he uh, metallic mixed in with blue. So a great example of that would be the Defenders, or not Defenders, um, Defender, Defender X. X. Yeah, for Guard, for Monk. For Guard, yeah. yeah. Um, that is a hybrid kind of semi-metallic, non-metallic, or it's... It's metallic. It's basically, so what I did for that color scheme is I mixed um, Meridius Blue with Cold Steel, 50-50. And I used that for the base coat of the, all of the blue kind of metallic, semi-metallic armor that they have. And then I highlighted with Cold Steel and I shaded with uh, like regular opaque colors, so non-metallic colors. I want to say it was a black-brown or something. Yeah. So that way your shadows stay stay matte, and then your yep. highlights are very shiny. Kind of helps sell the the effect a little bit more. Yeah, and the cool thing about that is it just, it, it kind of gives it a, a, you know, that cool-looking metallic sheen. So I'm going to let this dry for a second, and I'm actually going to go through here, and I'm going to paint some, some blue glow, because why not? We're going to try it on the top, and we're going to see what everybody thinks. So there's like two ways that I would think to go with this, and it would be either yellow or... Um, either yellow glow or blue glow. And I think because we used um, some like purpley colors in the shadows, I think the blue is gonna look better. So what I'm doing here is I'm laying down a base coat of Men the White Highlight in some of the channels. And normally I would do this afterwards, but I'm kind of curious. I'm waiting for some of the spots to dry. Completely. We just got raided by AMP Services. Oh. Welcome, AMP. Thank you so much for the raid. Welcome to our show. This is Get mm. Your Paint On, which is a show that myself, Jordan Lamb, studio painter for Privateer Press, puts on every Thursday, although we haven't for the last few months because of very, very obvious reasons. Reasons. Um, and it's just a, it's kind of a hangout show where uh, I hang out with the community or those of us who want to sit down and paint, and we talk about painting. We typically have a new model that we show off or um, an older model that we want to show new techniques on, and we just sit down and we paint, we have fun, and talk about it. Uh, and I'm here to answer questions that anybody has about painting um, for any reason. So thank you again. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jeff, for, for reaching out, and thank you, AMP Services, for the raid. And welcome again, everybody. Ha oh, thanks. Thanks, AMP. Those models were a lot of fun to paint, and I'm very much looking forward to some of the new ones that we're, we're working on. So, more to come. All right, so taking some arcane blue, we're just going to mix it in with some of this mouth white highlight. We're just going to throw it in these channels here. And center Looks up, Jordan. Like. Yep. All right, what do you guys think of the blue? Is it working? I like it. I kind of want. I want to see something a little, a little different, a little darker, punchier. I mean, you're looking at it differently than I am. I can. I can only see it on camera. 
punchier in terms of the blue or yeah more intense a more intense blue yeah i mean it's not done so i mean once it has a little bit of like kind of so it'll have some like dark ring, rings once i go back in and i do put a little bit of a shade into the highlight right then it will it'll come out a little bit more panthera onka was that a white or a very light silver you put before the blue uh white white mammoth white highlight it's this guy right here it's like an off-white, kind of a yellowish white. And center up just a little more, Jordan. Yep. And this is kind of just uh, sketching in the, the glow just to kind of see what it looks like, see if I like it, which I do so far. It's all right. Uh, but we are going to do the glaze. So I'm mixing up the red. I'm just going to put a couple of blops on the palette. And we're going to take my big brush. And this is red ink, right? It's red ink, straight out of the pot. We're going to water it down a bunch. And by a bunch, I mean a bunch. So this is like 10 to 15 to 1. Like it's, you, you really want to water it down a bunch. Uh, you can skip a couple of these. Um, you can skip a couple of stages or a couple levels of the, the glaze by uh, using it a little bit more straight out of the, out of the pot. But having a little bit more control over the, mm. the glaze is Center definitely, more? definitely nice. I, I consider glazes uh, kind of like salt in cooking. Is that, um, you know, easier to add a little more, harder to take away. Yes. So we're just going to go over these red bits lightly with some of this red ink. And we're just going to pull back those highlights and the shadows together, and it's gonna pull it back into looking a lot more kind of candy coat red. This is not, you know, and as we're watching this, this is, again, not something that has a real immediate obvious effect as it's being applied to oh, the yeah. brush. This is gonna take quite a few layers to really build up. Um, and I might be able to cheat a little bit. I can use a more opaque, uh, more saturated version of the ink. Uh, but you really want to use really thin coats to kind of build it up. And I mean, you can even see just off of that, that one coat starting to change the color a little bit. And depending on how fast you're working, a hair dryer may be your friend yes. here. Yeah. Um, we had a question. Where did it go? To? Oh, Dragon Pup, are you applying the glaze to everything equally or are you trying to focus on certain parts? Um, equally for the most part. Um, you can focus on some parts if you've over highlighted, right? So if I went a little too bright, then I can you know, come back and do a couple of extra um, coats over those areas to kind of bring them back down. Um, it, it really is kind of up to you, right? Like it's, you're, you're, because you're using so many coats of a thin glaze, right? Um, you can just keep, keep on going over the various parts that you feel like aren't quite there yet until everything is uniform or looks the correct color or shade that you want it to be. Um, and then you kind of want to let everything, make sure everything's, the, the, the layer is dry before you go back over it with another layer. I'm gonna get a quick, we got a request to see a quick zoom of the palette, <coughs> so yeah. there we go. And 24 Hour Gamer Geek, uh, this is a question that, that Jordan gets a lot. Can you explain the difference between a glaze and a wash? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you're seeing here with the glaze, right, I'm tinting the colors that I've already put down with my highlights and my shadows, right? So the idea is you're, you're tinting the, the, the colors that you've already put down. A wash tints the colors, but it also defines the shadows because it seeps into the recesses, 
it makes the recesses really dark. So, a great example of this is the metallics that we've already done, right? Is I base coated in cold steel and I put a wash of the muddy, um, muddy wash over it, mm -hmm. and see how it's kind of lined all of these recessed areas. That's not me doing that by hand, that's all the wash. So the wash is designed specifically to kind of give you all these like nice detailed recesses. And then the, um, the glaze is just to tint stuff. And you can make a, a, a wash a glaze, you just thin it out more, right? And it's how you apply it as well. Like if I were to use this as a, as a glaze, I could, or a wash, I could, I'd wanna increase the saturation a little bit more by adding more red ink, but. Um, yeah, I think you, you actually just asked or answered Hidicule's question, which is more watered down, a wash or a glaze? Oh, and a it, glaze, for it's, sure. Okay. For sure, a glaze. Because you want the, um, the wash to have enough impact that it, it seeps into the recesses and it creates a darker color in the recess. Um, you also apply it a little differently. Um, and a good way to make a wash as well is if you mix mixing medium into it because it adds more body to the paint without adding more pigment. So it flows, yeah, it flows better because like uh, Hanley said there, the, the flow is a really big deal with a wash. Less so with a glaze. You want it to be very uniform and kind of just hit everything smoothly. But yeah, so we're, we're kind of pulling away from that peach back to an orange highlight. You can see there, so it's not quite as like peachy and white. I almost wish we had left like half the model unglazed just to be able to see if we could uh, see the difference on the two. I mean, I can go back and put a, one of those like peach highlights on there. What I'd like you to do is go back and repaint half of it yeah. without the glaze. You would love that. You start now, I'll wait. So yeah, so this part is, is pretty easy. You just gotta go over it until you're happy with it. But it's nice, and the, the nice thing about glazes too is because it kind of melts all the colors together, it, um, it's really good at eliminating some of your kind of unsmooth blends. So if you are working quick like I am here and you didn't have time or don't have the inclination to to do like super clean blends or you, you don't have the ability to, the glaze is really good at kind of mo putting all of those things together and making it look like you did a really, really good job with blending all the colors together. Yeah, see I like that, that, that turned out really cool. It's looking great. So I'm gonna let this dry for a second. And like I said before, I've got two models to show uh, here on the stream today. So the first one we showed for everybody who was not here earlier, we've got Bulkhead from our new Riot Quest Kickstarter. Wintertime Wasteland. Uh, so this is one of the new models from that set. And then one that I know a lot of people have been a big fan of. He's, he's big, and he's fluffy, and pretty, and he likes bumblebees, I hear. His name is Bumbles. There's Bumbles. He has big razor claws, too. Yeah, the big old razor claws. Oh, I'm digging the armor paint job on the back there where it's uh, collecting all the rust. Yeah, he's, uh, he's definitely got some beat up armor that's been around for a hot minute. You can see all the kind of chipping and stuff on the armor plates. I also like how the armor is from, from different sources. Yep. Not universal armor pieced together. Yeah, this was a lot of fun to work on. little bear. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. I really, really like this model a lot. 
So yeah, so th that's the second one that we had to show you here. <coughs> and back to this. This should be ready for a couple of more layers of the glaze. So now, it, it, uh, you know, whatever we have time for today is what we're going to, what we can do on this model, but are there additional steps uh, that you could or that other people could take after this on this, or, or is this glaze the final, the final thing you'd want to be doing at the this The glaze point? Is, is generally the final thing you want to do. You can always clean it up and kind of go back over it um, to kind of push the highlights a little bit more if you wiped out too much. Um, but the goal really is to, to get those highlights in there in the first place so you don't have to go back and do it. Good night, Forum Goon. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah, thanks to everybody for coming and hanging out with us yeah. at, uh, at uh, this uh, new Gen Con online. Glad we get to do something. It would have been a shame to let Gen Con go this year without having something to celebrate. Yeah, we're just talking about the show. Before the show, how uh, bummed you were not to uh, be able to fly out to Indy this year. We always love hanging out with all the community members and seeing everybody. It's been a while since I've not gone to Indianapolis this time of year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it feels weird. I guess, uh, for me, it's been, uh, I think it's eight straight years. Yeah. I'm going on four, I think, now. Three with the company and then the one right before where I went. All right. I think that's pretty much where we can sit with this guy for now. Tony, did we have anything that we wanted to cover or that we haven't gotten a chance to go over yet? I don't think so. You showed off all of your show-off stuff. Sweet. So, yeah, maybe I think it might be uh, just about time to wrap it up. Right on. Well, I want to say thank you, everybody, for joining us this afternoon. It's been great catching up with everybody and kind of going over things. Uh, hopefully sometime in the relatively near future we can get back to streaming on a regular schedule. Uh, but thanks again for, for joining us and I uh, hope you guys have a wonderful afternoon and stay cool out there. I know it's really, really warm everywhere. <laughs> <laughs>